Welcome to MIMA Season 2 Ladder Matches right here at the Paradigm Mall where we are about to witness 112 fighters in seven categories slugging it out for a place in the quarterfinals. The quality of fighters is even better this year due to the tryouts across Malaysia. So that guarantees exciting and explosive matches for MIMA Season 2. came out with all cylinders firing as they traded blows and kicks. But it was Damon who seemed the more aggressive of the two fighters. Both fighters kept the fight off the ground and Damon was outpointing Zeus with some hard blows to the face and came off the better fighter at the end of the first round. Second, Damon caught his opponent off guard and managed to take down. But Zeus reversed, but could not get the upper hand. Damon switched to half mount and was ready to attack, but the bell is wrong. It was all or nothing in the third, and both fighters gave their all, knowing that this was their last chance to advance to the quarterfinals. And both fighters fought fatigued until the end of the bout. And it would go to the judges' decision. In the end, with his corner behind him, Damon secured his win, but his opponent was complacent with the result. The next fight sees a frantic start between these two bantamweight fighters. Both Ung Kai Wei in the red corner and his opponent, Jessen Ong, were looking for the knockout blows, but it was Kai Wei who scored the first with the takedown. But Jessen was not going to give up easily as he took advantage of the cage and managed to get into a rear naked choke position. Despite his efforts, Kai Wei managed to escape the situation and regain the upper hand. He was the more dominant fighter and took his time to clinch the first round. But the bell would pause the action for the moment. A quick break for both the fighters, and the second round began. Kawei would again score with the takedown. But in spite of his efforts, the referee did not see any action on the ground, and the fight would be restarted. Kawei would then again take his time, and again, he manages the takedown. But Jessen was firm with his defense and goes on the attack while on the ground. This obviously took a lot of effort on both fighters, and at the end of the second round, it was going to be a fight to the end. In the third, Kawe was again the dominant fighter and kept the fight on the ground. And Jessen knew that with the points going to his opponent, he would have to go broke for the kill. And as they traded blows, the end of the round was signaled. Jessen's fans were chanting, but despite his popularity, it was Ung Ka Wei who secured the win. Joshua Q began aggressively and brought the fight to the ground as he utilized his superior height to good use. And as he attacked with some ground and pound and vicious knees to the body, his opponent, Warren Justin Chan, held on strongly. The moment passed for Joshua and Warren survived the first round. A quick instructions from both corners, and the second round began with Joshua going for the kill. This time, as the fight wore on, Warren kept his opponent at bay, with both fighters standing up as the bell rang for the end of the second round. And when the third round began, Joshua again exerted his advantage and took the fight to the ground. There were times when Warren surprised his opponent, 
with an unexpected kick that floored Joshua. But Warren failed to take advantage of his fortune, and as the round wore on, it was only going to be one decision. Joshua claimed his win with a bold statement. And from the onset, both fighters struck hard, but Tia Guan got connected as Faisal hurtled to the ground. Taking the advantage, Tia Guan took the fight to the ground, but Faisal gave as good as he got as both fighters exchanged positions. Tia Guan managed the takedown, but again, as the time wore on, Faisal was good with his defense and even reversed and was raining in some blows of his own. The round ended with both fighters still in for a spot to the next round. As the second round began, Faisal used his Muay Thai training with some death kicks, but Tia Guan quickly brought the fight to the ground. And patiently, Tia Guan began his maneuver that will eventually seal the win. An armbar finish that takes him to the Mima quarterfinals. Naimul's brother, Dial took on Janartan in the next bantamweight fight. And it was never going to be a tactical fight, as both were looking for a quick win. But both fighters were strong and demonstrated some handy skills. Dial looked to have scored the first point with a massive takedown. But even when he looked to be in a difficult position, Janartan was cool under pressure. Janardin kept the fight to his opponent and saved himself to the end of the first round. In the second, Janardin looked to be the more aggressive of the two as he scored a perfect takedown and executed some strikes of his own from the top. Dial managed to keep himself in the round and was saved by the bell. The final round was rung and with both fighters tiring, it was only adrenaline that kept the two fighters going. With less than three minutes left in the fight, Janardin looked to keep his opponent at bay. The crowd was all hyped up by the action as Janardin began to take control of the fight with his superior fitness, and he began to rain blows on Dial. With time running out, Janardin would be more active of the two fighters, and as the time wore down, Janardin knew that he had accomplished what he had set out to do, win and move on to the next stage. Next up, a much-anticipated fight between Michael Ford from Saba and Nelson Lim from Johor in the heavyweight matchup. Michael started off confidently with the takedown attempt, but he soon found out that one small slip would cause a massive mistake. As both fighters traded heavy blows, Michael lost his balance, and Nelson seized on the opportunity to go for the win. And much to his surprise, a submission that ended the fight in the first round. This welterweight contest sees Wang Han Chin taking on Aaron Tan in the blue corner. The first round sees Han Chin kicking his way into trouble, but the slight slip up did not deter him as he took control of the fight. But Aaron was not one to go down easily as he looked to give his all. However, Han Chen again used his reach to great effect and slowly took over the momentum of the fight as Aaron backed off into the end of the first round. As the second round started, Han Chen did not seem to want to go the distance and began an aggressive attack, which eventually sucked the breath out of his opponent. Literally, a knockout blow to win the fight. So in the flyweight category, the ambitious Penangite, Xia Zhang Yun, took on Liu Bang Jun from Selangor. But 11 seconds in, Xia Yun dealt a fatal blow to end the fight in quick fashion. A win for the straight-A student, but his opponent was unsatisfied. One half of the Kalai brothers, Effendi, took on Fu Ming Ki in the bantamweight division. As the first round began, Effendi utilized his lightning quick hands to good use and took control of the fight. And with his boxing background, Effendi found his range and used his advantage effectively. It was almost the same in the second round, but this time there was no turning back for Effendi as he smashed his way to victory with a TKO that put him firmly into the next stage of the tournament.
great win for the Sabahan fighter. So a much determined heavyweight fighter, Nor Saiful returned in the MEMA season two ladder matches with a wishful first bout finish. His opponent, Sia Aslan, started off the fight with some aggressive punches, but to no effect as Nor Saiful gained control and took him to the ground. And Nor Saiful's promise was fulfilled as it only took him 30 seconds to end the fight with an Americana from the mount. It was a welterweight matchup that was going to be a crowd pleaser as Sarawaki and Steven Oon took on KL's Tebin Gavin Dasami. Tebin may have had a height advantage, but Steven's advantage was his overall strength and stamina. However, both fighters were going all out as they fought their way in the round. At one point, Tebin had the upper hand and made use of his longer reach by outstriking Steven to the ground. But Steven showed why he was a warrior by outmuscling his opponent by taking him down. These two were going to go all the way until the end of the first round. With the second round underway, Steven went on the offensive. But again, the two fighters were equally matched in strength and aggression. But the turning point was when Tebin went for the takedown, and Steven caught him off guard and went for the guillotine choke, ending Tebin's hope of advancing to the next stage by a whisker. A great fight and a great win for the Sarawakian. The lightweight bout saw Sarawakian Gary McClay and Selangor's Carl Pereira took it out in the first round. That was one-sided as Gary showed an array of striking skills. Round two, however, looked to be the reverse of the first, as Carl looked to catch up on lost time. But despite the blows he was taking, Gary took back control of the situation and submitted his opponent with a well-executed Americana. Another win for East Malaysia and a place in the quarters for Gary. Penangai, the butcher Mohammed Faisal, faced Noel Wu from KL in the flyweight division and both fighters came out with guns blazing and adrenaline pumping as they chased each other around the cage. But nothing came out of it as the first round ended. With the second round underway, Faisal knew that he would need to score points and did so with good takedowns on his opponent. And what was missing in his first appearance in MEMA season one was in abundance this time as he demonstrated some good groundwork on his opponent until the end of the round. As the final round started, Faisal was again on the attack as he scored again with good grappling techniques. It was all a one-way street as Faisal grounded and pounded his opponent in the dying minutes of the final round, knowing what victory had in store. Sabahan Travis Jude Fernandez was on a mission as he took on Ivan Colantian in the bantamweight contest. Travis was attacking confidently and giving his all, but Ivan was no slouch as he kept up the pace with his younger opponent. And a few blows to the head reminded Travis that it was going to be a long day as the round ended. The second round saw both fighters taking out their frustrations on each other, and Travis tried unsuccessfully to score takedowns up until the end of the second round. In the final round, it was back and forth for both fighters, and it was clear that this was going to go the distance, and the judges would have to decide the outcome. Unfortunately, Travis was faced with a massive disappointment. It was supposed to be a grudge match, but all it took was six seconds for Jackson Lee to create the fastest win in MEMA history. His opponent didn't know what hit him, it went to show sometimes that all it takes is one sucker punch. A quick response by the officials and medical team ensured the safety of the fighter, too. You know what, Peter? This has been the most exciting ladder matches I've witnessed so far. I mean, we've had lightning quick knockouts, submissions, referees' decisions, and fighters going all the way to the third round. I mean, you name it, we had it. As well as plenty of drama on top of that. And congratulations to all the winners of this round. We hope to see them come along with more action in the quarterfinals. That's right, but it's time for us to say goodbye. But catch us next time only on Mima Season 2.